1% higher, 100 points. Uh, Sensex up 341. Global tailwinds continue to be very supportive. Markets, of course, are up 100 points. There are reports suggesting that Saudi Arabia's Public Investment Fund and General Atlantic together are considering a stake buy in geo platforms. The market is up about 90 points. The bank Nifty is down 230 points. That's full one percentage point. The Nifty is ending about nine points lower. The bank Nifty about 400 points lower. So massive dichotomy between the two major indices. Markets failed to hold opening gains and with minor cuts, ICICI Bank, Kotak Mahindra Bank drag while Reliance Industries lend support. Auto stocks lead the Nifty higher after Hero Motor Corp decides to reopen 1,500 retail outlets across the country. Maruti Suzuki, Bajaj Auto and Tata Motors rally 6%. Governments intend to borrow 12 lakh crore rupees compared to the budget estimated for under 8 lakh crores in F521, pulls down bonds and pushes up bond yields. The rupee is also weaker. And railway stocks rally as Indian railways plan to resume passenger trains tomorrow. Aviation stocks also soar on hopes that domestic mobility will restart soon. Aviation Minister Hardeep Puri calls for a calibrated reopening of transportation. Nifty Bank underperforms, falls 2% after ICICI Bank reports gross NPAs at over 5%. It sparked fears of higher NPAs across the board going forward. Well, steeply and sharply lower from the day's highs. Uh, that basically was the story as far as uh, today's trading action is concerned. You're with us here on a fresh new edition of Markets Today. We're going to wrap up all that happened in those six hours of trading via headlines and lots of important opinion, both corporate and market. I'm Prashant Nair. With me, my colleague Sonia. Hi, Sonia. Hi, Prashant. Thanks for that. But that's not all. It's a packed show today. We'll get you the market opinion from Jonathan Garner of Morgan Stanley and Sanjeev Prasad of Kotak Institutional Equities. In Corporate Voices, we have H.M. Bangor of Sri Cements and Vikram Aditya Singh Kichi, the Executive Director of Bank of Baroda. We also bring you an exclusive conversation with Ratan Tata on what he makes of this pandemic. Okay, well, uh, that's what you'll get to see on the show in the next half an hour. But uh, on to the day's trading action then. Prashant, uh, you know, it was a very, very volatile day. And by the end of it, I think uh, the day belonged to the Bears. Oh, absolutely. No doubt about it, Sonia. And, you know, the last many days were looking very, very iffy. We had days when the Nifty was at 80, 85 points. I remember, I think it was Wednesday or Thursday last week. Even then, it was... Almost as if the market was scared that, uh, you know, another wave, a, a wave of selling is going to hit it, etc., etc. And it was all very local because global markets have been doing very well. I mean, actually, uh, you know, U.S. Indus index futures do very well and have done very well in non-U.S. trading hours when Asia is trading, Europe is trading. And then when cash market starts in the U.S., I mean, those indices pick up at the end higher as well and the cycle is repeated. Despite that, I mean, things have been shaky here. Uh, and there is no doubt about that. So, I mean, you know, the Nifty ending 165 points off the high, the Bank Nifty ending about 759 points off the day's high. I mean, that is quite a pullback by any standard, right? Uh, what has been the theme, basically? The theme has been this reopening trade. Uh, you know, around the world, in UK, in many states in the US, in some parts of Asia, here in India, I mean, expectations are high that the reopening is going to, once again, uh, bring back uh, some of the demand which has been suppressed because of the lockdown and markets have been enthused about that. But, you know, when you see the market pulling back like the way it did today, uh, it makes you wonder whether that trade has already kind of run out of steam. Uh, the uh, One is uh, the, lockdown, uh, the lockdown finishing and the restart happening, but at the same time, I think the, that, that weariness is setting in uh, that uh, what will this reopening really show us? Will it show us that a lot of the consumption is, has been impaired severely or will it show that consumption in many crucial areas is going to bounce back uh, very, very fast. So, I mean, I think that is the debate which now markets are moving on to purely from looking at, well, you know, uh, reopening is so many days away and that kind of thing, which we were doing till about last week or so. 
Uh, India, by the way, is still continuing to underperform global markets by a very large yardstick. You can sort of track this on a day-on-day -day basis or a weekly or a, I mean, you know, any time frame, and that is very, very clear. And one of the reasons, of course, for that is that we are still awaiting uh, any meaningful fiscal stimulus from the government. The chatter is, and there are reports indicating that it might finally come this week, but we've seen the story pan out more than a few times in the past uh, one, one and a half months as well. But Sonia, let's talk about stocks. I mean, what went higher, what was down? I think autos were the flavor of the day. Well, absolutely, you know, and by the end of the day, it was a weak day for the bulls. No two ways about that. Uh, the Nifty was down about 200 points from the highs. The high that we hit today was 9439, and the Nifty lost about 200 points from there. The Bank Nifty was down 400 points, so that was the big disappointment. It was ICICI Bank that really dragged its feet today post its earnings. The slippages were elevated for ICICI Bank, and that stock ended 5% lower today. Uh, so that was the key disappointed disappointment. It uh, uh, drag the other stocks as well, like HDFC from the heavyweights. Uh, if you look at it, FMCG stocks also saw profit taking today. So whether it was an HUL, uh, you know, Nestle, Asian Paints. In fact, Nestle comes out with numbers tomorrow, and ahead of that, that stock was down quite a bit, down about one and a half odd percent. But on the flip side, uh, the big uh, movers today were really the auto names, not just autos but auto ancillaries as well. Hero Motor Corp went home as the biggest Nifty gainer. Uh, they have reported a fifteen hundred. Uh, outlets have reopened of Hero Motor Corp. They've sold 10,000 units as well. All of this has spurred sentiment not just in autos but also auto ancillaries like Madison Sumi too. So these were the pockets that um did well, primarily the auto space, while on the flip side you had FMCG that was under pressure and of course banks were the big losers today. But you can safely say that this market is headed for more volatility um, You know, after the run-up that we've seen since the 24th of March. Jonathan Garner of Morgan Stanley and Sanjeev Prasad of Kotak Institutional Equities gave us their outlook both on the global and Indian markets, so let's listen in to what they had to say. This rally has extended uh, too far and we're likely to see a, a pullback. And what we observe in the past is when those bottom-up consensus estimates are missed and therefore they continue to have to tumble, market troughs tend to be W-shaped, not V-shaped. And that certainly was the case in 08, 09, mm -hmm. uh, and also in previous major mm -hmm. uh, earnings slowdowns and recessions. So the key, clear answer to your question is, uh, we would be sellers here, not buyers, and there's downside, particularly for broad emerging markets, to our target prices. Global tailwinds continue to be very supportive on the back of the fact that, A, you are starting to see, you know, if you look at Europe, clearly a number of cases are peaking, uh, active cases, you know, coming down pretty sharply. Uh, new cases, now if you look at the four worst uh, hit countries which were... Uh, and Germany and Spain, now they are, you know, in the hundreds now. Markets are starting to look forward now that, you know, A, the healthcare is getting priced to some extent, and, you know, B, the medium-term damage to the economy may not be as high as market expected one point in time. So it's mostly driven by global factors, I would say, as far as Indian market is concerned. So Okay, uh, well, we move on to the second headline then. Auto stocks were the flavor of the day. I mean, the index ending higher and stocks like uh, Hero Motor Corp, Tata Motors, M&M ending, all ending between 5 and 6% in the green. This, of course, was sparked by news early in the day that Hero Motor Corp has said it is basically restarting and resuming its retail operations. About 1,500-odd dealer touch points are being reopened. Of course, they're saying they're following all safety precautions and social distancing norms. Uh, I mean, Sonia, that kind of gave us gave the market a prelude, right, that others may follow soon. Well, absolutely, you know. Uh, so, as you rightly pointed out, uh, restarting of their retail touch points is important. The fact that 1,500 retail touch points have begun for Hero Motor Corp, and that contributes to 30% of their overall uh, retail shops across the country. So, that basically means that 30% of their business is now open at the retail end. Um, they also managed to sell 10,000 units and that's big considering that you know there was a lockdown that went on for so long, there was a complete demand crunch. So now this sale of 10,000 units has given uh, rise to hopes that others can follow suit. Uh, they also resume manufacturing operations at three of their plants uh, which is in Dharuhera, Gurgaon and Haridwar. So commercial vehicle, uh, they've commenced vehicle dispatches, sorry, from their manufacturing facilities on the uh, 7th of May, that's on uh, last Thursday. 
Uh, now, you know, uh, Prashant, the moot point here is that um, COVID has not hit the rural markets as much as it has hit the urban markets. And Hero Motor Corp gets over 60% of their sales from the rural markets. So, the, hence, they're a big beneficiary uh, from the demand pickup there. And the fact that they've managed to sell 10,000 units is also taken as a big positive. All right. Uh uh, Sonia, thanks uh, very much for that. Well, uh, let's move on to the third headline then. And this is basically uh, with regards to bond markets, rupee markets, and has a linkage with uh, stock markets as well. The government announced on Friday that it is essentially going to uh, borrow more in its fight against COVID-19. Uh, it is now saying that it will borrow 12 lakh crores in F521 as compared to what it said it would when it presented the budget. That number was just under 8 lakh crores. Uh, as a response to this, bond yields were higher, the rupee was marginally weaker. Uh, the expectation, of course, is that the RBI is going to come in and is going to say, well, I'm going to buy some of these bonds from the market, from market participants. It's not happened yet. My colleague Lata is here with her, with her analysis and her take. Lata. Well, the borrowing number has been increased from 7.8 lakh crore, which was mentioned in the budget, to 12 lakh crore. That's the amount the government will, central government will borrow from the markets. Now, all this is, this extra 4.2 lakh crore is going to increase the deficit. On that, everyone agrees, but there is no agreement on the extent of increase. And the other point on which most economists agree is that uh, this doesn't include fiscal stimulus for that or for the borrowing will have to be announced. Now, therefore, we have to look at the assumptions. Uh, look, at, look, at, look at the facts and the assumptions. Uh, the GDP is seen flat to negative by most economists, whereas the budget had estimated a 10% nominal GDP growth. So let us look at the numbers. In the budget, if you look at it, the GDP would be at 224 lakh crore for the current year. This assumes a 10% growth over 204 lakh crore last year. The budget also estimated that the deficit would be 7.96 lakh crore. So now what are economists telling you? They're saying this 224 lakh crore ain't happening. It's going to be flat like last year at 204 lakh crore if that. There are some people who believe it will be 200 lakh crore. There are some people who would be who even believe it, there could be a 5% fall. So, you know, 180 lakh crore. Therefore, their estimate of deficit is 6%. Okay, it's the market estimate. If you take the borrowing of uh, the fiscal deficit of 12 lakh crore as a percentage of 204 lakh crore, it works to nearly 6% of GDP. But here again, there are more assumptions. What are the tax receipts? Tax receipts, uh, many people expect will come down to 13 lakh crore versus the budget estimate of 16.35 lakh crore. Why? Because the deficit is flat. In FY20, uh, the tax co collections are about 13 lakh crore. It should be at best the same this year as well. On non-tax revenues, most people believe that both dividend from, say, uh, PSU banks, etc., will be lower. Much more than that, they expect the divestment assumption of 2 lakh crore is a tad too ambitious. So because of these two reasons, they believe whatever was announced as higher borrowing is going to be absorbed by the revenue shortfall. However, revenue will rise by about half a percent because of the fuel duties. If you remember, recently increased cesses and additional duties. As well, expenditure will be saved because there has been a DA freeze. So that's another 0.2% which uh, the uh, government gets. And hence, most people believe that with this, and some expenditure switching. I know you don't have to spend on capital investment. You can take the, that money and use it for uh, fiscal stimulus. If that is done, then the extra borrowing could fall. But because there are so many assumptions involved, there is a bit of uh, 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 you know disagreement on how much more borrowing may come. Uh, but almost everyone expects that if you want a stimulus, an additional borrowing is absolutely necessary on the part of the government. All right, uh, Lata, thanks a lot for that. Well, moving on, we did get a chance to speak to a lot of corporates to give us a sense of which way things are headed. We are seeing a lot of pent-up demand in rural India. Now, that's the word coming in from H.M. Bangur, the managing director of Shri Cements. He also told us earlier in the day that the company's margins would have to be compromised because costs are on the rise. Take a look. People are taking up stocks. A lot of pent-up demand is there. 
and apparently it seems that this is the whole covid case is a urban phenomena about 80% of the cases are urban so all the big centers like delhi agra may be affected but when we go to the rural side demand is there and government infrastructure also is expected to pick up so we are doing roughly 50% or so of our normal volume on an at present in last one week our average volume dispatches is about 50% right now margins will definitely be low as fixed cost will be high as 50% production you can't make all the uh, the same margins all your efficiencies will not be same they have to be compromised because right now somewhere the demand may be there somewhere you have to take extra care of the people you have to keep them in the factory feed them so all sort of unusual practices are right now being done so margins cannot be same as in the previous quarter they will be compromised welcome back you're still with us on markets today let's go straight to the rest of the headlines that we're tracking for you the fourth headline today is on what's happening with some of the railway stocks they rallied in trade gaining about 3 to 5% this after the indian railways announced that it will resume passenger trains starting tomorrow aviation stocks also rallied on hopes that domestic mobility will restart very soon in a conversation with the cnbc tv18 avi with cnbc tv18 aviation minister hardeep puri said that india needs a calibrated opening up of transportation and a decision will be taken sooner rather than later listen in civil aviation cannot be opened up in isolation we have a large economy the civil aviation sector is the third largest domestic civil aviation but you can't open the civil aviation sector when you are in lockdown domestic civil aviation can be opened in a slow and calibrated manner how do you define slow and calibrated i don't think even i have the answer i think all of us will have to sit together there are meetings taking place on this i have said repeatedly that keeping the middle seat vacant is not an option has not been an option for any airline anywhere in the world the airlines already operate on very very thin margin and if you keep one third of the aircraft empty many of them may choose not to fly i saw a clarification by one of the european carriers which is very interesting which says that look we will use masks we will disinfect the aircraft the masks will have high quality filters and we will ensure that we minimize risk as much as possible okay we move on to the fifth and the last headline then today and this has been the trouble spot for the market for some time the banking pack which has been remarkably weak as compared to the nifty and the rest of the uh, stocks well uh, the nifty bank was under pressure led largely by icici bank's 5% cut this after icici bank reported results which were largely mixed NPAs are five percent plus. Uh, of course, there is also uh, there are also fears that as the economy continues to slow down, economy facing uh, companies and banks primarily will take the bear the brunt of this, as ICICI Bank has shown. My colleague Abhishek is here with a quick wrap out of the most important numbers from the results of the banking major. Abhishek. It was a mixed set of numbers coming in from ICICI Bank. Now, the moratorium book is at 30% in line with peers like Axis Bank. However, the slippages remain elevated at north of 5,300 crores uh, due to the fact that international slippages were higher in this quarter. The gross NPA, however, is the lowest in last 17 quarters uh, due to higher write-offs. So, it came in at 5.53% when compared to about 5.95% in the previous quarter. The watch list addition remained elevated at close to 2,300 crores. A uh, run rate per quarter. However, the watch list saw a dip in absolute value by more than 4%, and as a ratio of book, it was at 2.58 when compared to 2.74 in the previous quarter. The domestic subsidiaries' earnings remain weak. You know, their profitability uh, decreased by about 19-20% on a sequential basis. The low growth also tapered down to about 10% from being 12% plus in the earlier quarters. However, the net interest margin was the highest ever at 3.87, and that the 
deposit momentum remained really strong growing at seven and a half percent sequentially which provides enough uh, liquidity cushion in the balance sheet uh, due to elevated provision on account of elevated slippages and covid 19 the pad came in below our pole back to you all right, Abhishek, thanks a lot for that. Well, moving on, 60% of our total loans is under moratorium. That's the word coming in from Vikram Aditya Singh Kichi, who is the Executive Director at Bank of Baroda. In a conversation with CNBC TV 18's Lata Venkate, she added that 90% of the bank's MSME customers have opted for the moratorium. Listen in. Almost 90% of the people in the MSMC sector are taking that uh, advantage of moratorium. Okay. No, and no, what about overall banking, uh, your total borrowers, how many may have opted? See, there, there, there are two, two things. Too. One, one where the borrower himself has given a standing instruction or a NASH mandate, mm. There, we are continuing with that, with them giving, giving them an option to opt out of this. Okay. The second is the auto, auto debit, which is generated out of the demand created sure. from the loan account. There, we have across the board given a moratorium, okay. giving them an option to actually, uh, if they don't want this moratorium, to opt out. Okay. Okay, so, so that, you can't give works. us a number on how much, how many people have opted. I mean, if if I have to talk about the MSME sector, yes, almost. No, not MSME. I'm asking practice. you. No, no, I'm asking you for your entire universe. What would be the moratorium? Uh, I guess almost sixty percent. Okay, and how many of those loans are going to eventually turn into NPAs? Only time will tell. I guess that's the big worry that the street has as well with regards to the financials and the kind of pressure that we've seen. But Reliance Industries has become the only non-American company to make it to the list of top five companies which have delivered the best return since the 20th of March this year. That's the day when most markets across the world bottomed out after sharp cuts because of the COVID-19 pandemic. In fact, since that day, the Reliance Industries stock has delivered over 53% returns. Prashant, it's been up, up and away for Reliance. Uh, oh, absolutely, uh, Sonia. So, you know, it's not just outperformance locally compared to other things here in India, but globally as well. Uh, you know, very few names of that size have done as well as RIL has. So, I mean, you know, what I did basically was looked at returns starting 20th of March, around the time when most markets bottomed. Uh, all our US uh, dollar returns. I also uh, sort of put a filter of uh, companies with market capitalization more than a hundred billion dollars. So to narrow the list and only look at large mega caps really. And the list is on your screen and uh, you know the numbers are stark. Tesla tops the list with about a 92% gain. There is PayPal with a 67% gain in number two. Chevron in number three with a 61% gain. Home Depot with a 54% gain. And then at number five is Reliance Industries, which is up 53.5% nearly. So this is, I mean, you know, uh, quite remarkably remarkable because I'm not looking at, uh, you know, our market. I'm looking at uh, 100 billion plus uh, stock, uh, market cap stocks around the world. Uh, the other co companies are also all up, your, up on your screen. There's Facebook, Exxon, uh, you know, United Health. The, the remarkable thing about this is that if you look at these 10 stocks, RIL is the only non-American company which uh, finds a place, which finds a mention here in the top 10. If you look at the top 15 returning stocks globally, uh, you know, these mega caps, then Reliance becomes the only Asian company there because there is one European company which finds a mention as well. So 13 out of the 15 are American. There, are, there, is, one, there is one from India and then there is another European company to make it the, whole, the full 15. So, I mean, as I've been saying, uh, it's, done, uh, it's done, then done well for the market here uh, in terms of, you know, supporting it, that and a bunch of other names. But I think most of the heavy lifting has come from there. And also in terms of return rankings from, uh, you know, large cap, mega caps around the world, uh, it tops uh, right up there at number five. Back to you. Okay, well, thanks a lot for that. Uh, standard disclaimer, though, Reliance Industries is the owner of the channel that you're watching. With that, it is curtains down on this edition of uh, Markets Today. Thanks so much for tuning in. You guys have a good evening.